Hi guys, it's Nick. Welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about the top interior design mistakes that I see. These are the do's and don'ts of interior design. Uh, let's get into it. Okay, so interior design mistakes, let's talk about them. First of all, there's no judgment here. I have made I think I've made every single mistake on this list. I either have seen it a lot, but most likely I have done it myself. I have learned from the mistakes that I've made and that's why I'm sharing them with you today. So let's get started. The first tip that I have for you, and this is probably the biggest one and it kind of flows throughout the rest of the tips that I have. First tip is to plan your space before you buy anything. So this is something that I had to learn because when I say plan your space, I literally mean get out a piece of paper get out your measuring tape, start drawing something and create kind of mapping out your living room or your bedroom or your kitchen or whatever you're looking to do. It's going to help you understand this is where your couch is gonna go, these are where your chairs are gonna go, your coffee table, your dining table, where your focal points are. You're gonna to start to sort of assemble the space. What it's also gonna help you do is really help you understand your requirements that you're going to need for when you actually go to start shopping. The mistakes that I see over and over again, um, and I have done this, is you just sort of start wandering West Elm or you just start kind of going to you know Target if you're in the States or whatever, and you just sort of start wandering and you're like, oh, this is nice. This is pretty, oh, I really like that. And we do that all the time. And I have done that time and time again. You just get lost wandering the aisles of Ikea. And before you know it, you've overbought and you've bought the wrong stuff. It doesn't actually fit for the space that you have. So if you create a plan and you map it out so that you know exactly where everything's going, you know exactly what you're gonna need, you're gonna save a bunch of money because you're not gonna buy some extra crap that's just gonna sit or get thrown on Craigslist in a couple of months. And you end up sticking with the stuff that you know that you really need. That brings me to my second interior design mistake that I see over and over again and that is buying the wrong furniture for the space that you have. This can go both ways. This goes for buying furniture that's too small when it should be a little bit bigger or most likely I have done this more often is buying things that are too big for the space that you have. So again feeding back to that first mistake if you don't have a plan you don't know how big your coffee table or your or your living room couch or whatever is going to actually be but if you map it out so that you have the requirements and go to the store and you can say you know what i need a coffee table i know it needs to be roughly this side give or take a few inches and that becomes sort of the requirement and the lens in which you look at furniture when you start to go shopping so for example in the space that i have i actually broke my coffee table when i moved to my new apartment uh so actually my mom did but that's a long story um and so i needed to buy a new coffee table and so the original one that I had ended up actually being way too small for the space anyway. And I really actually, when I really broke it out and realized where all my uh, furniture was going to go, the coffee table needed to be a little bit larger than I had first thought. And that was because I wanted to create about 12 to 18 inches between the edge of your couch to your coffee table. And when I did that throughout actually the three chairs or the sofa and the two accent chairs that I have, I realized I needed a larger coffee table. So you might need to do the same. If you map it out and you have a plan, you're buying the furniture that fits the space you have. So that brings me to point number three, an interior design mistake that I see all the time is um, not allowing the right clearance around different pieces of furniture. Again, I'm gonna go back to that coffee table, about 12 to 18 inches, so about a foot, foot and a half uh, from your sofa to your coffee table. Why? Well, it's built for people to sit on their couch and comfortably reach over and put their cocktail or put their coffee or whatever on your coffee table. And it's not far enough that they're reaching, but it's also not close enough that they're able to uh, still get in comfortably and move their legs around and things like that. So it makes the space feel a lot more functional. Uh, people are able to move around comfortably, but also a functional space is a beautiful space because it catches your eye if things feel off. If it looks like things are a little too close together, a little too crammed, like you wouldn't be able to actually comfortably fit through it, it looks off. So to make sure that your space is more functional, make sure that you have a good amount of clearance between each. So my fourth tip for you guys is art or tell or like your television that is either too high or too low uh, for the space. So again, for something like your couch looking at your television, you want to make sure that you're looking slightly up. If you're looking like this, 
uh, that's a sign of a TV that is hung too high. Yeah, we see that time and time again. We also sometimes see TVs that are too low where you're sitting there looking down. You don't want to strain your neck. You don't want your guests to be uncomfortable and you want to make sure that all the different areas of the seating are able to see things like the television. So in the case of things like art, well, if you haven't seen, I have a two minute tip here where I just explain all the different dimensions of how to hang it properly and make sure that it's perfect every single time. So you want to design things so that it's basically just below eye level. You don't want art that's hung too high. That's really difficult to see. You don't want it to be too low. So it's like dragging on the ground. You want it to be just the height where basically you're looking at kind of estimating eye level for most people. Number five is choosing the right paint for your home. So I think it's important to realize number one, that usually when you're choosing your paint, it's one of the last things that you do. And the reason for that is because you want to make sure that you have all your furniture pieces. You want to make sure you have all your different colors and the textures and everything sort of figured out in the space before you start looking at paint colors. And also if you're looking at white, I have another video of how to choose the white paint. Basically, you want to choose a paint or a white paint or any paint that is going to fit the vibe of the space that you're trying to create that's going to work with your fixed elements and your other different elements in your space um, and it's also going to respond to the different sort of natural or artificial light that you sort of have in the space as well. Number six on my list is an interior design mistake I see all the time is choosing the right size area rug. You don't want a rug that's obviously too small. If it's just centered around like a little postage stamp sitting in the center of your room that's barely covering your coffee table, your rug is too small. So you want to look at it I think either two ways. You want to look at it with where your rug is either covering all of your furniture, so that means your um, that means your accent chairs and your couch and your coffee table and everything is going to be on completely on the furniture, so that's all four legs right there on the rug. Or you're looking at putting the uh, the front half of your couch basically would be on your area rug and then the back half would be off. So what I like to see in spaces is I like the front half, so that's the front two legs of either, either the accent chairs or the couch. Um, I like to see those on the rug, but I like to see the other half off of the area rug. And that's just a personal preference for me. Um, I like to see the flooring that's underneath. Um, I mean, I guess if you have really ugly flooring, then it's probably better to cover it up with a massive area rug. So you don't want a rug that is so small that it starts to look a little bit silly, like why is it even there? Number seven on my list, you guys, is sticking with the builder grade options that your home came with. So this can be true if you're a renter, this can be true if you're a homeowner, um, and that is that oftentimes we move into a space, we just sort of accept certain things like drawer pulls, door handles, um, you know, pulls on your vanity, or uh, faucets, kitchen faucets, shower stack, whatever, uh, we sort of just kind of accept that those things we were given and it feels wasteful to get rid of them, which I totally get that. But I think if you really want to upgrade your space and you really want to tailor it and make it your own, upgrading those things makes a massive, massive difference. I've talked about this in several videos, you guys, I understand but I think this makes such a huge, huge difference to your home. And I think it's a design mistake because people forget that these little details really, really matter. And we sort of feel like we're kind of stuck with them. And as some of you guys know, I have to do my shameless plug here. I have to talk about my business, Ollie Nickel. Uh, it's an e-commerce business where you can buy bathroom fixtures and faucets and accessories uh, directly from our website. We ship all over North America. I've just really tried to make it really, really, really simple uh, for you to be able to kind of upgrade those bathroom fixtures uh, and those accessories you can kind of get away from that builder grade stuff and into something a little bit more luxurious but still at an affordable price point so feel free to check it out at ollynickel.com link is in the description number eight on my list of design mistakes the last one you guys this is not knowing your interior design style or if you know it you sort of kind of just ignore it and just randomly go buy a bunch of stuff uh this is something again that i have done time and time again and it really just results in a space that doesn't look cohesive this sort of goes right back to the beginning when I gave you that first mistake, which is not having a plan. So not knowing your interior design style just means that you are going to buy a bunch of stuff that is fairly random and you're just gonna hope and pray that it's all gonna to work together. I've been there, I've done it, and I can tell you hope is not a strategy. So what I tend to do is I love, of course, like anybody else, I like the fun stuff of going shopping, figuring out what I wanna pick. Oh, this is really nice. Oh, great, yeah, take it home, whatever, and hope it works. And oftentimes it doesn't because, you know, we're not sticking to a certain design style. We're not taking into account things like you know, creating a rhythm in the space, looking at different colors. How do you bring different colors or different pattern uh, from different elements in the space and bringing them together cohesively? Um, if you're just going out to the store and going, yeah, I'm just gonna grab that because it looks nice. Um, it might look really nice in the store, but that's because a designer 
team of designers has gone and done the work and made sure that their line has is pulled together so that it works together. It might work in the store, it's not gonna necessarily work for you. And that's because you've grabbed a whole bunch of different elements and chucked them together. So have a plan, know your style. Of course, if you haven't seen my interior design style video or how to combine interior design styles, you can check those videos out here. It's really important that you understand your design aesthetic so that when you go out shopping, you are armed with a plan and you are ready to get the right elements to bring them together so that your space will look cohesive cohesive and it will look beautiful. So that's it for me for today, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, uh, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Give me a like. That'd be great. A share. What a superstar you would be. Um, and then feel free to subscribe because if you like design as much as I do, then stick around. I'd love to see you more often. So subscribe down below. That's it. Bye.